What is up, most distinguished viewers of this channel? It's a lazy Saturday, and by lazy I mean I got out of bed at 10 a.m., which is pretty late for me, and I thought, why not come down to the tin shed and talk about welding clamps? Because that's the crazy stuff that goes through my mind on a Saturday at 10 a.m. So with that said, let's get into it. There's some snow melt in the background off the roof of the tin shed, so I apologize if you hear some drips. That's what's going on. So if you work around metal or woodworking for that matter, you're no stranger to clamps and this style of clamp is actually common in far more than metalworking. So you probably are familiar with it. I call it like a F style clamp, but it's basically a welding clamp. Also can be used for other things. This happens to be Harbor Freight's Burger, Berger, whatever brand. And I find that they're pretty decent, especially for 20 bucks, you can't beat them. This is an identical clone to a Bessie clamp. So close, in fact, I almost wonder if they just said to a Chinese factory, hey, here's the clamp, make it identical. Because I know Bessies are generally made not in China, as far as I remember. But, I mean, I'm telling you, dead ringer, everything looks very similar. But for $20, pretty solid clamp. There's a lot of limitations to this style of clamp, and one of which being... This pad here has a kind of like a ball and socket. Well, the downside to this is that's actually a pivot point. And if you try and clamp something that doesn't overlap the pivot point, it just is going to dicker off when you tighten it and slide off. So just like this, it's going to pop right off. So certain things you can't really clamp on these. The other issue with them is the way that they clamp. And I'll show you. So this style clamp has some limitations and well, there's quite a few actually. The main one being is there's a lot of slop in the design of the mechanism here, which is like a slip fit. And once this gets pressed that way, that prevents it from sliding up this bar. Unfortunately, it takes a lot of turns of the handle to get this thing to hit clamping pressure. Now, part of that is the way that this mechanism works, but a lot of it also is the inherent flex in this uh, jaw part here as well as in here to where you have to really reef on this to get the max clamping pressure. And that can be a problem depending on what you're clamping on. It gives, well, for one, more opportunity for it to fly out of the jaw. And two, it can be hard to balance everything here to get this set up and tighten it. And let me show you how many turns this takes to hit clamping pressure. So about there, I could get, I could actually spin this a whole nother turn, but this is about what I would consider normal average clamping pressure would be on this clamp. Now under a load, this arm and this bottom arm are parallel. Under a lighter load, this screw is essentially pointing back towards here because the jaws are not parallel. And that just makes it worse for clamping on oddball objects because they're going to want to pop off in towards this way. And this pivot here, once you use this enough, it doesn't pivot that well. And again, it's kind of, I'm not saying a flawed design because this works great for 20 bucks, but there are limitations. And that's why I picked up a couple more industrial clamps that I'll be showing you next. So let's look at those. So a local welding store brought to me a set of clamps by this company, which I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Fire? Fear? Who knows? I even tried to look it up and all their YouTube videos have no audio to them. So pretty weird, but I could not find how it's pronounced. So these clamps, a local welding store brought to me and I tested them out and I'm like, wow, that's kind of a genius idea. Why didn't I think of that? And by the way, this isn't a sponsored video. I paid good money for these clamps. So just so you know, this design is a lot different than a traditional F clamp. Now this happens to be a bigger one because that's what I bought. They do make them where they're significantly smaller than this. This is an R series. They make them in an XXL, which is even bigger than this. And then they make them in F series and a bunch of other ones. Some even closer in size to this. 
But this is a completely different mechanism. I've never seen this in the clamp, and I got pretty excited when I saw it because of how it works. So let's look at the piston assembly on this. So this clamp has a completely different mechanism from what I'm used to seeing. It's still a screw clamp, kind of like this. However, the threads are internal, which is really nice because guess what? Welding spatter won't get in here and screw the threads up to making it difficult to turn. That's a pretty ingenious idea. But it's far more beneficial than just control a weld spatter. This piston only moves out and in. It doesn't twist like this does, which means that you can put a lot of clamping pressure and it doesn't spin what you're working on. And you can clamp off angle on this and it still clamps. It's not like this where due to the flexibility of the ball and socket, what you're clamping is gonna pop out. So a lot different of a design. The other interesting thing is with this handle, you can spin it like this, and then you can also do it like that to make it faster. So it has a more adaptable handle. That's not really a big deal to be honest, but what is a big deal is how effective these are at clamping. And let me clamp it to the table. So this clamp has a completely different thought process to how it tightens. For one, it has a like teeth on this back here that grab this jaw when this arm gets pressed up. And two, the design of these arms have no flex in them like the other F-style clamps, which combined gives you the ability to hit max clamping load with this without sitting and turning the handles all day long, which I really enjoy. And that's what kind of sold me on these besides the fact that it's a non-moving piston. And let me show you. So that's one turn, two, maybe two and an eighth, two and a quarter, and you're at max clamping load. And that's simply because there isn't so much play and spring to everything. And that I see is a huge benefit because there's been plenty of times that I clamp stuff down and sit in there, you know, four or five turns to get it to tight. And then the thing that I'm clamping pops out of there, especially round tube. I really like how efficient this is. It just makes sense. And then to undo it, it takes the same amount and you can literally slide it right off. You're not dealing with all that spring pressure you gotta release before the clamp will let go. So significantly faster on and off. Let's take a look at the jaws up close. So these clamps have grooves cut into the upper jaw, which can be beneficial if you need to clamp something like this with maybe a plate down below, it's less likely to pop out on you. And for round tube, this will center on the round part and again, will prevent that tube from blowing out of here versus pretty much all the F-style clamps are just flat polished stainless or chromium finished steel and far more slippery and you're not gonna get any, <laughs> any additional aid to what you're clamping. And speaking of clamping, let me show you how much you can offset something in this. So I have this plate clamped in here and you can see how much it's offset from the center line of the piston and it's still clamped in there, not gonna fly out by any means. So you can really clamp some oddball stuff in here. Now let me show you the F clamp. So I don't know if you can see that. It's virtually impossible to clamp something on the edge like this because immediately this pad shifts over and the thinner it is, the harder it's gonna be because you gotta clamp it directly in the center. And if I tighten it at all, that's exactly what's gonna happen. So much improved design. I really like the way that works. I'm glad somebody thought of that. Let me show you a couple other things. One of the things that always bothered me with these F-style clamps is how if you're holding it and you bump into something, the jaw just falls all the way to the bottom. Just like a Harbor Freight jack stand while you're under it. But even if you bump it here, they move, you rattle it around, and they just fall down. And this one's pretty much brand new. When they get wore in where this gets a lot of slop in it, you pretty much can't hold this thing, and you end up fighting with it all the time. Compare it to this style clamp, and you can bump it all day. 
and the jaw doesn't move out of place because there appears to be a little rubber bushing right here, which helps. And again, the teeth down below, yet it's very easy to reposition. I like that. So to show you how effective the different jaw styles are, watch this. That's not coming out of there. And this thing is clamped pretty tight in here. And there it goes. And now I gotta go and find it. But if you clamp oddball stuff, this could be a lifesaver. All right, let's talk about the build construction a little bit and go to conclusion. Between these two clamps, they, they have different build constructions, kind of like I alluded to earlier. This is a cast steel, very heavy duty, thick casting. This is a forged part. So this bar here is a one piece forging, as is the jaw. Now these are incredibly strong. I've beat the daylights out of them in the past and I can't recall breaking one. I've wrecked threads on some in the ball and socket. I've done a number two, but I don't think I've ever broken a jaw on these. You'd have to do something pretty stupid. Again, the downside to this is <laughs> it's very tough and resilient, but it has so much flex, it kind of is, sucks to use per se. This being a casting of some sort, it's not a forging, likely cast steel, probably pretty strong would be my guess. And the amount of beef on this being that this was the second biggest one they offer, I have no uh, doubt as to the durability of this. Now, realistically, if you're the type that clamps uh, crap down and hits it with a sledgehammer, you may want to go with a one-piece forging like this and not a casting, because if you miss hit and this thing is at max tension and you hit this, it may shatter. I don't know on that. It's just speculation. This one-piece tool steel bar, though, you're never going to break this. I mean, my God, you'd have to be better than He-Man to do that. And keep in mind, guys, this is the bigger, second biggest one they offer. They offer this clamp style in a smaller clamp that's more equal to this. Likewise, Bessie and a number of companies offer this F-style clamp in the same size as this guy. So this is kind of not really apples to apples comparison, but all of the smaller clamps work just like this, and this was the size that I needed for myself personally for here in the shop, so that's why I got the bigger one. Now, cost-wise, get your pocketbooks ready, guys. <laughs> All this beef comes with a price, and these clamps sell be for between, I guess, about $80 and $95 is what I saw for the range of them, which is not cheap. These generally sell for about $30. Bucks. Sometimes you can get them for $20 on sale, and that's for the generic Made in Taiwan version. The Bessie brand or any kind of Made in America, not that Bessie is necessarily, those are going to cost you a bit more, probably 50, 60 for the same size for something made in America. Now, the bigger versions of both of these get exorbitantly expensive. The biggest version of this, which I'll put a picture of it up now, is around $250 a clamp, which is also the same price as the next size up. The biggest one they make, the XXL, is also $250 a clamp. So not the cheapest. The ones smaller than this are cheaper than $90 a clamp. So again, they're going to be at a minimum, I'd say two to three times what a comparable cheap Amazon or Harbor Freight clamp is. But for you guys that use clamps a lot or clamp oddball stuff, I really think this is a pretty unique design. It seems to work excellent. And I've actually been using a set of these at work for a while. And I had to have some for myself because I really like the design of them and the power that they have. It's just, it's a nice tool. And I don't know why, but this is one of the few things that I actually have been excited about this year so far because of how well they work and it's just a joy to use. Now, if I had any negative thing to say about this, well, two things really. One, the availability of these is, is kind of sparse. I had never even heard of them until a guy, like I said, at the local welding store came into my work and kind of talked to me about it and brought one. I didn't even ask about it. He just, hey, check this out. And I was like, oh, wow, that's cool. So. The availability hopefully will be getting better because I think people, when they find out about these, that these are going to become quite popular. And the second thing is, 
and I don't really take it as a negative, to be honest. It has a plastic handle. It feels good in the hand, and the whole reason why I think they did plastic is so you wouldn't put a pipe on this and crank this sucker till it exploded. And that's also why these handles like this are the size they are. The whole theory, just like on a vise, that the handle will bend before you break the screw. So it's kind of a built-in safety. My guess is it's the same thing with this. Uh, it's designed that way to be the failing link so that you don't break anything doing something stupid. The fact that this is indexable out of the way easy and it's really good to hold. I find in my older age that these bars here, man, if you try and get any clamping load on it, it ends up hurting your tendons. And I'm a whiner, so I'll mention that. Anyways, if you want some of these, again, I'm not a shill for this, and I, it's not a sponsored video. I bought mine off of Amazon, and I got it in two days. Baker's Gas is now selling them, which you know my feelings on them. I've kind of been burned by them in a while, for a while ago, whatever, is what it is on that. I'm not bitter. And uh, I think a bunch of other like cyber weld and online sources. So get it from wherever you want and enjoy them because I really like these. I think you will too. So I think I covered this enough. If you have a clamp that you really like that is different than these or better or something, feel free to leave them in the comments. Everyone will enjoy reading about it and looking at those too because us guys, we love tools. Nothing wrong with it. But that said, thanks for watching. Until next time.